check. Oh, my! Big right hand! Pat Barry looking to finish! It's over! Wow! Can Carlo it looked like really Carlo was out. It looked like he was out. Oh, he he's is out. out. He's out. Nope. Still oh, up. man. Mergliot is letting this go. That's wow. incredible. Great job done by Czech Congo. He's in big trouble, though. Barry looking to finish the fight. Oh, he oh, takes the right. Barry. Pat Barry's down. Oh, he lands oh, all over. Oh, Czech Congo oh, has knocked him. What's going on, guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having an excellent day today. So yesterday, we did have the S&P 500 index putting in an all-time high over on the stock market, and Bitcoin even broke above $50,000, only to fall down over 5% today. As you can see, there is a lot of red in the charts right now. So what is going on with Bitcoin? Are we still in this bump and run reversal, or are we looking to actually follow essentially what Gareth Soloway was saying in yesterday's video that Bitcoin is going to be extremely bearish over the next six months and uh, yeah, there's not much to look forward to. Well, in today's video, I'm going to explain to you exactly why we are seeing this red right now. We can show you with proof what is happening to Bitcoin specifically as well as the altcoins. And also, we need to talk about some insane structure that is being built right now in the Bitcoin chart that you cannot deny that looks incredibly, incredibly bullish. And I know you may not think so today, but stick around. I'm going to prove it to you with on-chain data and you can see exactly what is happening in the background right now, not to mention the fact, guys, that there is a lot of institutional interest in not only just Bitcoin and Ethereum, but also a lot of other cryptos as well. And 2022 could actually turn out to be the most insane, legendary year for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as a whole. So if that sounds good to you, you know what to do. If you are not subscribed, definitely stick around. And of course, we will start with the short-term price action. So having a look right here, you will notice that um, Bitcoin essentially was putting in what some analysts were referring to as this bump and run pattern, right? Where we do have all of this resistance right here. And then once we do tap into that resistance again, we do have it act as support, right? Well, you can see right now, if we actually zoom in, we are sitting on this level right here. Keep in mind, this is a daily candle. You could always wick below it. Essentially, where you would want to close is close above that $48,600 level. You can actually see right here, though, if we zoom out to the legacy trend, right, where we had this, and this goes all the way back to essentially March of the beginning of this year, where we did have the top, we had a little bit of a bull trap, we did have the top here, and then we had the massive correction, right, even could kind of have said it kind of looked like a head and shoulders pattern, right? Well, we did have that resistance again right here. This was on September and uh, September 7th, and then you can see if we zoom in, we are actually attempting to not only have this level act as the resist, as the support, but also this legacy level right here. Okay, guys, where you can see we had a lot of structure being built, a lot of structure right there. We had some interest in volume right here. We also had essentially the bottom right there. So it could be that we are just simply looking to build that structure. However, you're probably saying, well, but what's going on right now? Well, specifically what's happening is two things. Number one, we had a slew of massive alerts over on Whale Alert. There was $3.917 billion worth of Bitcoin coin that was moving back and forth between a few wallets that nobody knows who these wallets are. And oftentimes when you see massive amounts of Bitcoin moving, it does tend to spook investors. But actually, more likely what truly happened, as you can see right here, is that we had a massive long liquidation. You can see right here out of 94 million worth of Bitcoin liquidations, 71 were liquidated in just the last 12 hours with 89.5% of them representing long liquidations. In fact, you can see right here that we're still falling. We're down almost 7% in just 24 hours. And you can see that now the 24 hour total is up to 354.48. And it's not just in Bitcoin, it's in a lot of the other cryptos as well. But it's very obvious that you can see that it was because there were a lot of people going long. Now, you can see right here 
that we had actually talked about the opportunity of playing the breakout. Now, I told you guys that the breakout was around 49,000, and I told you that the resistance was around 52,238. You can pause this video. You can watch the video that I put out two videos ago. We literally go over these exact levels, and I said that is where we are going to have the resistance. And look at this, guys. You had multiple opportunities. We touched it on the day before Christmas, and we also touched it on December 27th. So you had multiple opportunities to get in and get out of this trade and ultimately what I believe we're doing right now as you can see is we had the resistance we knew that there that we weren't going to break through the resistance we knew it was going to push us down but now we're actually having the bottom of this channel right here okay which was the support right then it became the resistance and now I do believe that it's going to act as support again so you know yeah bitcoin might come down to like the $47,900 level but I do believe that we will see a correction from that point and if you were one of the people that you know got caught you know, essentially with your pants down trying to, you know, long beyond the resistance. Well, then I highly recommend that you guys check out my Bybit tutorial, my Femex tutorial. I go over specifically how to trade this type of a market. And obviously, if you get subscribed to my channel every single day, I am sharing with you my exact predictions and what I'm looking at. Okay. And, and I, I mean, guys, like we literally, literally said, you know, this was the area down here to trade the breakout. And this was the area to take profit here. So a lot of people, what they were doing was they got into the blue zone and they were like, great, you know, we're going to 55,000. No guys, that's not what happens. Then we have to come down and rebuild the support down here. However, in a minute, I would like to show you something absolutely incredible, something amazing that is happening in the Bitcoin chart right now, and it does require zooming out. But before we get to that point, I just want to show you some pretty interesting on-chain data. Now, you can see like Dylan LeClaire pointed out, we have the HODLer net position change of 30 days, and it's pretty apparent that we're nowhere in the red. We are in fact in the green right now. So as you can see, like he said, Bitcoin is once again in accumulation mode. We also have the entity adjusted 90 day coin days destroyed. Now I just want to point out, if you have a look down here, when we were going into the 2017, uh, you know, blow off top, look at how high this got guys. This got way, 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 way up here, right? Now look at this. Even at the top of the Wyckoff distribution, look at this, guys. We're still only sitting down here in the orange band. So this is actually showing us that a lot of the selling that has been happening is from newer wallets, from newer holders, from people that just got into crypto, maybe even institutions or maybe even big whales that just got in. They made some money and now they're just cashing out. But the long-term hodlers, the very old coins, right, if you're looking at the hodl wave chart, they are not selling. In fact, they they are accumulating and not just to mention that but what the real plan C pointed out if you look at short-term holder cost basis that is sitting at around 51,947 and you can see historically short-term holder cost basis has served as on-chain bull market support bands so obviously we had a little bit of rejection right we tested those levels right there we are falling down at this point but I am anticipating that we do have you know like we couldn't get above this resistance here right we came above, we did hit the center. And I told you the significance of this. If we come back here, the significance of this red trend is that it provided a lot of support right here. Okay. When we were at the top and it also acted as resistance when we sprung back, but then we fell all the way from 51,900 all the way back down to 42,000, right? So that's why this red level is acting as a lot of resistance. But as soon as we do break above that, you can see historically Bitcoin goes on a massive rally after that. But listen, if that's not enough, oh, you're selling the hopium. It's over. It's a red day. Everything is crashing. Well, let me show you. Zoom out guys. Zoom out. What we are looking at right here has got to be the simplest chart you could possibly show. A five-year-old could see what is happening right now. This is a textbook ascending triangle. Ascending triangles are bullish, guys. And considering that this is sitting at the top of the market, at the top of a massive rally, that makes it even more bullish. This right here is the monthly chart of Bitcoin. Now, you can see I took this right from the bottom right here. 
right from the bottom of this uh, candle. And you can see that, okay, sure, uh, we have these wicks, right? There's always these, uh, right? We had a big one right here, went down to 42, although we did come all the way back up still to around 48 currently. But the most important thing, the, mo the, the thing that you need to look at is that every single time we are going up, we are putting in a higher low on the candle close. This is the monthly chart, right? So this is starting back in December of 2020, right? You can see right here, we have this. Now look at this, guys. Here's the candle close. Now look at the next candle close. Higher. Look at the next one. Higher. Look at the next two. Higher. And look at where we are today. Still higher. Okay? Now obviously, um, I, I mean, I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I mean, I don't see us falling below this level. It's possible. Could we close the year below 47,568? We could. But realistically, as long as Bitcoin stays above 43,000, we are still putting in higher lows. And... If you actually just look at the top, even though you got to take this with a grain of salt here, even the top levels that we closed are higher. These sitting around 58,000 and this sitting at around 61,000. So it wouldn't be, you know, out of the cards to see Bitcoin continue to bounce around in here for a little bit, right? And this could even go to potentially June uh, of next year, uh, May or June of next year. And uh, people may not like that, right? They, they may want Bitcoin to go to 100K tomorrow. But what you can see, guys, is that we're definitely respecting this. We're staying in here. And every single time that Bitcoin attempts to have a breakout, uh, to the upside as well, to the downside and to the upside, we still just end up back inside of this triangle. But ultimately, you know, this pattern right here, an ascending triangle, is incredibly, incredibly bullish. So you must be patient. You have to understand that this is an incredible time to be accumulating Bitcoin. And all of these little, you know, daily moves, they're really just noise, guys. I mean, you can trade them. There are lots of opportunities to trade Bitcoin in these markets. But if you are a long-term hodler or you're worried that we're breaking some kind of a bullish structure, no, guys, not at all, not at all. So that being said, speaking of, we also do have uh, over here, so this is Noel. Um, I think her name is Noelle Atchison. She is the head of marketing insights at Genesis Trading. And she said that there is, there's still massive, uh, you know, interest in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as well. And she thinks that 2022 is going to continue to accelerate and be an even bigger year than 2021. You could actually see what she had to say right here. What are we going to be looking for in the in the next year? We expect a continuation of institutional involvement. We're seeing that. I mean, just the institutional growth over the past 12 months has been astonishing, and we're seeing strong signs of that accelerating over the next year, both through direct token investment and through investment in the crypto market infrastructure companies themselves. We, we saw the birth, Joe, of 60. We have, we have 65 unicorns. 40 of which appeared this past year in the past 12 months. That's an average of three a month. That's quite astonishing. And that kind of investment in the industry, directly in the companies, is likely to accelerate given the amount of money out there looking for returns and also giving the, the lower perceived risk. We also are seeing a greater interest from the institutions in a more diversified crypto portfolio. A year ago, Joe, you remember this, you used to talk about it, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. That was all they wanted to talk about. And then maybe ETH if they were feeling really daring. But now, Many investors are bypassing the two major cryptocurrencies directly and going to some of the riskier, but also higher return tokens that represent technological advancement, new cultural statements. The sector really has, I guess, disassociated itself from just the market leader, offering investors much more choice. Than they've ever had. Not to mention the fact that according to uh, Binfold right here, you can see that there's almost 20,000 new Bitcoin ATMs that have been installed just this year alone. So that's essentially an average of about 50 Bitcoin ATMs a day. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, oh, and not to mention, they say that um, Coin ATM Radar doesn't even track all the ATMs, so the actual number could be even higher than usual. But why would people use a Bitcoin ATM? Well, think about it. A lot of people are like, I want to buy Bitcoin, I want to get into crypto, but I don't really feel like setting up a Coinbase and doing all these other things and KYC and giving in documents. So really, with these ATMs, all you got to do is just put your dollars in, get a Bitcoin app, and then boom, it's sent right to your wallet. So yeah, this is very easy for people to onboard. And then once they have Bitcoin, then you can just start doing whatever you want, right? You can get in the decentralized world and everything else. And finally, I just wanted to end on, on this uh, tweet. 
This is from Joe Say. He's the executive vice chairman at Alibaba Group. He just randomly at 2.51 a.m. this morning, Eastern Time, just wrote, I like crypto. Interesting. I don't know what that means. I don't, I don't know if that means anything for Alibaba. He could just be saying this, but uh, pretty cool, right? Pretty cool, guys. So on that note, that is it for me. Like I said, I am not freaking out. I am not worried about this. I do anticipate that we will find some sort of support here, um, you know, whether it be on this downwards trend or whether it be on this upward support right here. Uh, for me, I would say most likely the lowest that I think we're going to see Bitcoin go is around 46,400, but most likely we won't dip below 47. Um, and that's sort of worst case scenario, short term, best case scenario is we just have a bounce uh, right off this level. And then we probably after this will break through that 51,400 and then the next level Level is sitting at around 53,400. Um, but probably a lot of people will just round that to about 54,000. So that is it for me today, guys. I just wanted to remind you, you know, a friendly reminder that um, you, you can't just look at the short term price movements, right? Yeah, you know, so yesterday's video, you were bullish and today you're bearish. No, I'm not bearish. I'm actually still bullish, even though we fell, you know, lower than we did yesterday. Because as I said, you know, if you look at what we're doing, we are building a massive, massive, massive ascending triangle, which is historically bullish, especially considering, um, you know, where this triangle is being built off of guys that, you know, for example, for example, if you did, if you did stay this late, and I'll just draw this roughly, this right here, guys, this was a descending triangle, you see? You see right here? And boom, look what we did. Even this, this was a descending triangle, sort of. And look what we did. Boom, we fell, right? So this is an ascending triangle. So this is the complete opposite, you know? So uh, yeah, guys. So that's it for me today. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a phenomenal day. My name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. And of course, if you haven't seen these videos popping up right here, right now, check them out. And until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.